Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to create custom buttons. Before we do that, let's talk about how the button function works in Clo 3D. Here is a sample blouse I have placed on the avatar. Let me add some buttons to complete the look. First, let's take a look of the button folder in Object Browser. Click the default button and go to Property Editor. Scroll down to Shape, click on the triangle next to the button image. You will see the button styles Clo provide for you to use on your design. You can choose any of them, change the size, thickness, color, and texture. Once you decide on the button, go back to 3D Window Toolbar and click Button. To place the button, you can either click any place on the garment in 3D Window. Or you can click to add a button on the pattern in 2D Window. However, it will be hard to line up the buttons if you place them freehand. So here is what you can do to place buttons on the placket. First, hold Shift and select two segment lines on the placket and right-click. Choose Distribute Internal Lines Between Segments. This way you can have a center line on your placket, and we can use it as a guideline to place buttons. Select Button Function from 3D Window Toolbar. Go back to 2D Window, and move cursor to the internal line where you want the first button to be. Then right-click to bring out the pop-up window. Enter the amount of button space in interval. Then enter the number of the buttons and click OK. Clo will automatically distribute the buttons on the placket according to the spacing amount you put in. Go back to the 3D toolbar and choose Select Move Button. Select all the buttons on the placket, right-click, choose Copy and right-click again choose Mirror Paste. You will be able to duplicate the button on the other side of the placket. Use Select Move Button tool select all the duplicated buttons. Right-click and choose Convert to Buttonhole. Right after you converting them, go to Property Editor, you have the option to change the angle of the buttonholes. For this blouse, I want to have vertical buttonholes, so I will enter 90 degrees angle. If you like to change the size of the buttonhole, go to Object Browser and click on Buttonhole. In Property Editor, you have the options to change the shape, width, and thread color for the buttonholes. The last step you can do is to close the placket on the blouse. First thing you need to make sure the buttonhole side of placket on the garment is over the button side of placket before you simulate. You can strengthen the placket to stabilize the pieces during simulation. Go to 3D Window Toolbar and find Fasten Button. Select all the buttons and move the cursors to the matching buttonholes and click. A lock sign will appear next to each button in 3D window to indicate that the button is locked in with corresponding button hole. Click simulate to fasten the buttons. And you will have a button up blouse look. Now you know how to use the button function, let's start making some custom buttons. The first sample I am going to show you is how to create a shank button. A shank button is the style without any button holes showing on the surface. You can use rectangle, ellipse, or polygon tool to create any shape you want in the 2D window. Make sure your ground grid is on in 3D window, that will help you to see where your button is located. Normally the button size is under 1 inch. But it would be easier to create round shapes and curve lines when it's a bigger piece. And you can scale it down to the correct size after you are done with your design. I am going to create a square shape button with cutout on 4 corners.
Once I am done creating the shape. Then select the pattern piece. Scale down the pattern close to the correct button size which is under 1 inch. Since it's a very tiny piece now. I will have to lower the particle distance to 1 or less. A warning message will pop up to let you know this will slow down simulation if you change particle distance to less than 5 mm. Just click OK, cause you won't need to simulate the button during the whole process. Next step. Go to Property Editor, under Simulation Properties. Find Add Thickness Rendering. Enter the amount to add the thickness to your pattern piece. Make sure you turn on Thick Texture Surface in 3D window. Scroll up to Curved Side Geometry to adjust the curvature percentage. This will determine the edges of your button to be rounded or straight cut. Also it will affect the thickness of your button. You will be able to see the adjustments in the 3D window at the same time. Once you have decided on the button thickness, go to 3D window, click on the button. Use Gizmo tool to rotate the button and make it parallel to the ground. Right click on it and select move to ground center. Zoom in, and change view angle to check the button. Make sure none of the button part is below the ground. This is why you need to have ground grid on to be able to see. Place the button on the center ground. Now you can either save the button as project or take a screenshot of the button. This will be used as the thumbnail later when you register that button. Go to File, Export the button as OBJ file. After you enter the file name and where you want to store this OBJ file. Click Save. A new export OBJ window will appear. Check select all patterns. Check single object. Check thick. And then click OK. Your button will be exported as OBJ file. Go to object browser, click on default button. In property editor window, scroll down to shape where you can see the default button image. Click on the plus sign to bring out register button window. Type the name you want to call the custom button. Use the screenshot or the saved project PNG image as the thumbnail. Then click the four square icon to import the OBJ file you saved earlier. Type in the width you want your custom button. Then click OK to finish. And there. You have registered a button preset. To use the custom button you just registered. Go back to button in object browser, and under shape in property editor. Click the triangle to bring out the options. You should be able to see your custom button there. Just click it, change the size and color if you want to. Use the button tool to add it onto your design. The next example I am going to show you how to create a custom button from a picture. Here is an apple shaped button I found online, and I would like to use it for my design. To duplicate this button. First, Create a square in the 2D window. This time I will make the square close to the actual button size. 
and I will place it flat on ground center in 3D window. Find graphic in 2D toolbar. Import the button picture file as graphic and place on the square piece. Use transform graphic to adjust the picture if you need to. Then start tracing it by using internal polygon tool. Make sure all the points are connected. Also trace the button holes. Once you are done tracing the shape, select the button holes internal lines. Use transform pattern tool right click and convert to hole. Then select the button shape internal lines. Right click and choose cut. This will cut out the apple shape. Select the leftover piece, and delete it. And you will get the apple shape button. But it's not done yet. Remember to lower the particle distance to one or less. And next, we need to add thickness to it. Select the piece and go to property editor. Under Simulation Properties, enter the amount to add the thickness to the button. Make sure your thick textured surface is on in 3D window. Change view angles to check and make sure your button is right above the ground in the center. Adjust the curved side geometry in Property Editor to your preference. You can change the color of the pattern piece to the same red as the surface graphic. So the side and back will be the same color as the apple. To make it look even more realistic, let's add thread details to the button. Use rectangle tool to create a narrow piece that's slightly longer than your buttonhole's distance. Create two internal lines inside this piece. The distance of the two internal lines should be the same length as the two buttonholes. Go to 3D window and find Fold Arrangement tool. Click on the internal line on this rectangle pieces in 3D window. A red and green arrow will appear. Select the color to fold the piece to your desired angle. Repeat the same on the other side. The reason we are doing this is to be able to insert it into the button holes. So it will look like actual thread sewing around the holes. However this piece is still too thick and don't look like thread. Use transform pattern tool and move the dotted line to scale it down to a very narrow string. Copy and paste to duplicate three more strings and rearrange them around the buttonholes to give a more natural realistic look. Now I am happy with the design. I will save it as project so I can use the PNG image as thumbnail later. For this button, I actually would like to save the graphic on the surface. So there's one more step you need to do. Go to top right of your window right above object browser. Click the triangle to bring out more options. Go to UV Editor. UV Editor is used for editing UV maps, which describe how a 2D image should be mapped onto a 3D object. Select all your pattern pieces in UV Editor. Right click and choose Fit UV to 0-1, this will arrange all your pieces into one square. Then click OK and go back to simulation. Now we can export the button. Go to File, Export it as OBJ, type file name and save. In the pop-up window, make sure select all patterns, check single object, check thick. This time I am going to check unified UV coordinate as well. Then click OK. The Apple button is now exported as OBJ. When you select UV coordinates, it will generate a PNG file which we will import it onto the button later. 
Go to button in object browser and then scroll down in property editor to click the plus sign next to the default button image. In register button window. Type the name you want for this custom button. Add the image for thumbnail. Then click on the four square to import the OBJ file. Enter the width for the button. Then click OK. To check if the button has been registered. Go back to Property Editor, under Shape, click the triangle to bring out the option. I can see the Apple button there. Click on it. And let me use Button Tool to add to a piece of fabric to make sure it's working. As you can see, when I bring back the button, it's going to be in white. This is where we need to import the PNG file we got earlier from saving UV coordinates. Just click on the button in Object Browser, go to Basic Parameters and click on the four squares symbol and texture to import the file. Let me give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the difference of using a regular PNG file and the UV coordinates PNG file. The first sample, I am using the regular Apple button image PNG file. You can see the image doesn't really match the button shape. Let's use the UV coordinates PNG file. And there, it will place the image exactly in the correct position. And there you go. I have created an apple shape button from a picture. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this video helpful. Please leave your comments and don't forget to click like and subscribe.